So if you watched my last video, you might know that I'm in Lithuania for a couple of months and I needed to find some gouache because I had a couple of paintings left to do in my Fresno Fauna series. I had three more paintings to do in gouache, so I desperately needed to find something, but I didn't want to have gouache that was really expensive or really fancy because I didn't really want to take it home with me because I have Winsor & Newton gouache at home. I've done a video with uh, the Himi Maya Himi gouache before and that was okay but I really preferred using the Winsor Newton designer gouache so they have it available here you can buy it from their website but they sell it either in a set of primary colors or in a larger set which gets really expensive and either that or they sell in individual tubes which are expensive to buy by themselves and plus they didn't even have any in stock when I looked like if I just wanted white or yellow ochre they didn't have those the reason I didn't want a primary set is because I needed yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber specifically. Those three colors are what I mostly use. That and like a magenta and a blue for my Fresno Fauna and that's why I was buying the gouache. So it didn't really make sense for me to get primary of a nicer brand and have to do all the mixing. I looked at a couple of German stores online. And some of them you have to check with other countries if they'll even ship to your country and then you have to pay the VAT tax. That was kind of complicated but I ended up going on Amazon in Germany. I saw that they had a lot more options there. They also had the Himi gouache sets but since I'd already tried that and I wanted to try something a little bit nicer. So they had Schminke which is pretty good gouache that I've heard good things about but that's very expensive and in the sets, like I said, just primary. Other gouache options that I saw were, uh, there was Royal Talons, Linnell Extra Fine, also expensive and limited availability for shipping here. But then there was Arteza, which was definitely the cheapest option, but it didn't look like the worst quality. I've heard about it a lot uh, on social media. And I saw that they had a 24 color set, which was way more than what I needed, but it was cheaper than any other option and it would give me yellow ochre and burnt sienna and the burnt umber that I needed and I had lots of cool colors so I thought it might be fun to explore those and not have to mix everything so this is what I got I got the 24 color premium set it says on the box the light fastness transparency pigment number of all of the colors I also had to get a palette because I didn't bring a palette for gouache so that was my experience buying gouache here in Europe and let me know if you're here in Europe and you have any other better recommendations and I will let you know what I think of these Arteza gouache colors because they're the easiest and cheapest option to get in my opinion. I got the 24 color set and it was about 20 euros plus 8 euros shipping for the whole order which included also 13 euros for the palette. And it was delivered in, I think it was three or four days, so not bad at all. So I started off by removing the little lid inside and tracing it so I can make a piece of paper cut to fit inside my palette because I always like to have a paper with the swatches of all the colors with me when I'm on the go with my palette. So I cut that out. Then I was able to test all the colors on that paper. So to test the white, I really wanted to test the opacity so I put down some pen lines uh, beforehand. The first white is titanium white and on the bottle or the tube it says uh, three pluses for light fastness, uh, the transparency which should be opaque. Definitely should have let those dry a bit more because as you can see with the first white it gets a little bit gray from the ink running. So I tried to make my swatches of color show uh, the range of opacity for each color so I put down with less water and then I cleaned my brush off and kind of pulled it, the color to the right with a little bit more water. So I'll just comment a bit on some specific colors. I think that for primary colors would be lemon yellow, crimson red, and then ultramarine blue is good for the primary. I really like the sky blue color. The light apricot color is also really fun. 
um, to have because that's always a like annoying color to mix is kind of a peachy color. The peach red, speaking of peach, is not peach at all, it's a neon pink and I really really don't like this color, it's not opaque at all. I can't see myself ever using that. Most of these colors I would use but usually I don't tend to use pinks and purples. The sap green felt a little watery in the color. It didn't really have much richness to it compared to sap greens that I've used before. The gray was an interesting addition. It's sort of like a bluish toned gray, which I use a lot. The burnt sienna is a bit more pink or red compared to what I'm used to, but I think that's just a Winsor & Newton thing. And it's also helpful to do a color wheel of the primaries that you plan to use to see how they're going to react and what kind of greens and oranges and purples you can make with the colors in your palette. So the first color wheel I did was with the three primary colors that I mentioned earlier. Then I did a six color primary wheel with a warm and cool color of each primary so that I could get the full range of colors. I also did a little test of the purples with two different blues compared to the lilac color that's provided in the set. And I think that for mixing purples, this set is not the best. These blues plus the reds that I was using didn't make the best purples, but they provide a pretty good purple for you, so I think that makes up for it. And other than that, I would say these colors are pretty fun. It's nice to have such a wide variety and they go down pretty well and look for the most part opaque. Okay, so now I decided to do a little painting study to test out these gouaches. So I used mostly the sap green, the deep green, viridian green, burnt umber, burnt sienna, the gray a bit, a bit of black, white and titanium white, and mid yellow and yellow ochre to mix with the greens. And also probably an ultramarine blue to make the darker greens. So I painted this stump that I found in Vingus Park. I kind of was creative with the composition and just focused on the textures of the leaves and the contrast between different layers of foliage. So my thoughts about how the gouache performed in the painting. Uh, one thing I noticed was the consistency was pretty good. It's easy to get it to be nice and creamy. I know with the Himi gouache that that is really sticky and I had a problem with grabbing way too much of it and then like it would be stuck to my brush, it would be stuck everywhere. You have to add a lot of water and then it was too runny but this paint is pretty good. Like it comes out of the tube nicely. Maybe it's just that it's in a tube so it doesn't dry out at all so you get to squeeze it out and it's already a good consistency. Opacity is okay. Um, Obviously for the dark colors it's better, and the dark colors really dry lighter, so you have to make sure to go over it multiple times or go darker than you think you need. The whites and the lighter colors, if you want them to be opaque, you're going to need to do very thick or multiple layers. And yeah, it takes practice to know the amount of water that correlates to the opacity that you want. And overall the colors, like I said, are pretty good. Um, they look really nice and bright on the paper and there's a lot of variety and I think they mix pretty well. So that's all my thoughts on the Arteza gouache that I was able to get my hands on and yeah if you're looking for lots of colors, wanting to try out gouache and not wanting to make a big commitment into buying super expensive tubes of professional gouache, definitely go with this brand. Please comment any questions you have or any thoughts you have about gouache in general um, or buying gouache in your region of the world. I'm super interested to hear any tips or challenges that you've had with getting your hands on some gouache for painting. So that's all. I'll see you next time and stay lovely.